Hello, I'm Wayne Partridge, a Christian businessman. Welcome to part five, the Catholic priesthood and the father. Before I begin, I must tell you that any church has got to be grounded and founded in and with the word of God. They, it must teach and preach God's word. And anything outside of God's word is probably wrong or is heresy. It has to be truth from God's word. This is part of their doctrine right off of their website. A priest is a baptized man who has received the sacrament of holy orders. Through this sacrament, a man enters into the ministerial priesthood, which gives him a sacred power to serve. The ministerial priesthood is given to serve the common priesthood. All the people of God are called to participate in the common priesthood. A priest is a means by which Christ unceasingly builds up and leads his church. Therefore, it is the mission of the Catholic priest to feed the church of God and grace of God. Go down a line. As such, a priest is a mediator. Look at that word. Priest is a mediator or bridge builder between God and humanity. He does this by participating in the one priesthood of Jesus Christ who, uni who unites God and humanity in his very being. The priest carries out the bridge building through teaching, divine worship, and leading the people. A priest offers the ministry of Jesus Christ to us today. When a priest offers the holy sacrifice of mass, it is Christ who offers the sacrifice. When he absolves or forgives sin in the sacrament of reconciliation, a fancy word for forgiveness, it is Christ who forgives. When he partakes in the mission of the church to teach and evangelize, it is Christ who speaks through him. When he offers love, comfort, and support to God's people, Christ is truly present with them. That would be through the priest. Okay, first of all, what we have here <clears throat> is a man, and the man has been baptized. And we dealt with that in part one, where baptize, baptism does not wash away sin. So we have a man that believes that his sins have been washed away, but they're not. The truth is he's a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, and I have asked him to forgive him for my sin. I've asked him to save my soul and to change me and make me a new person, and he did, and I'm saved today because of that. This person is not saved. If he is trusting in baptism, he is not saved. Okay, we got an unsaved sinner that has other baptized men or unsaved men in a ordination ceremony. And they lay their hands on him, they ordain him, and immediately through these order these holy orders or the ordination, he becomes a priest. And at that moment he is a mediator between God and man. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, For there is one God 
and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. First of all, when a sinner, a baptized man, which is still in his sin, becomes a mediator between God and man, that's heresy. That is a lie. That is not true. And, uh, you know, he could be a pastor and be a man like the, uh, the church is supposed to be, but he's not. He now is a priest and he is a mediator. And when he performs a duty like the, uh, the communion, the Lord's table, they call it Holy Communion. Okay. When he steps up there, then Christ takes over his body and that he's not himself anymore. He's Jesus. And when he holds up the cup and the bread to be consecrated, it's not him anymore, it's Jesus. When he stands in front of a person to baptize them, it's not him, it's Jesus. And anything that he performs as a priest, he's not himself, he's Jesus Christ. And my friend, that is another one of the biggest lies the Roman Catholic Church has ever told. That is heresy and a big fabricated lie. Looking at Matthew 23, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, teaching his disciples. Verse 8, But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> Neither be ye called masters, for one is your Master, even Christ. Coming right from the lips from Jesus Christ, who is God. Call no man your Father on the earth. Call no man Father. But yet the Catholic Church, they'll take things out of context and uh, say it's okay. They make up their own rules. And it has to be something that favors the church, which is not a church anymore. It is a club. They make up their own rules, and it if something seems to be a little bit too harsh or they need something to be a little bit more uh, pompous, they'll make it up. And they have no problem with that. I have a problem with a, a man that calls himself a priest that stands in front of, say, someone he's going to baptize and he puts his hand in water and sprinkles and water on a maybe an adult and he then that water is supposed to wash away that sin but it's not him that's doing it he's turned himself into Jesus Christ that's the way the priesthood works i wonder what he thinks about that you know, he's a man. He is a sinner just like I am. And uh, every time he performs a duty of the priest, he becomes God, Jesus Christ. How does he think about that? I wonder about that a lot. You know, the, the Roman Catholic Church is not a church. It is a club. And it is worldwide, and it has many, many members. And friend, most of those that are in hell now and that will go to hell in the future are there because 
of the Roman Catholic Church. St. John here is showing us a harlot in Revelation 17. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore setteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. There's a lot in Revelation 17 that deals with that harlot, but I just don't have time to deal with all of that. That is the Roman Catholic Church in today's world. The harlot is. She's sitting on waters and she is deceiving the nations, the peoples, the multitudes with her heresy and her lies. And like I said, most of the people in hell are going to be there because of the deception of the Roman Catholic Church. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the but that the world through him might be saved. God loved us enough to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sin. And if we will believe that in our heart and confess that with our mouth, believe that Jesus died for our sins, was buried and rose again, we shall have everlasting life. I would like to pray with you right now and ask you to be saved. If you are sincere in this and if you want to genuinely be saved the Bible way, I want you to pray with me right now. Father in heaven, by faith, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. Forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart and save me. Save my soul. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I prayed that prayer November 4th, 1971, and it changed my life. I was a new person and I wanted to live for Jesus Christ. I'm still a sinner and I confess my sins daily and often to God the Father. But I'm still saved. And friend, I would beg you if you are a Catholic in the Catholic Church, get out of that church and encourage others to go with you.